My name is Cameron McWhorter. I'm a reporter at the Wall Street Journal, and I'm the author of uh, Red Summer, the summer of 1919 in the awakening of Black America. And I wrote this book. I was on a fellowship at Harvard in, uh, in 2006, 2007. And my subject, my research subject was on race riots because every place I'd ever worked as a reporter, if you studied the history of that place, you know, in the cities that I'd worked in, various cities, if you looked into those histories, you'd find that there had been a race riot. And almost invariably those race riots would be uh, white mobs attacking black individuals or black communities. And I was fascinated how society could devolve to that point. Uh, I had worked as a reporter in Bosnia for a while during the war. And people had always said to me, they couldn't believe that society had devolved to where people were killing other people because of the, you know, the suffix of their name indicated that their ancestors had been a certain religion. And it just seemed absurd. And so I wanted to understand that. And I was researching it at Harvard. And I came pretty soon, if you study race riots in American history, and there are many of them, you come to the conclusion that 1919 was by far the worst uh, spate of these acts. And the reasons are manifold, but three big things were happening at that time that made it, uh, that led to racial tension and then explosion exploded into violence. One is um, the Great Migration. African-Americans were leaving the South because of Jim Crow and moving to Northern cities. And they were taking, uh, they were getting work. They were landing jobs and moving into neighborhoods. And lots of the people uh, who would classify themselves as white in those cities were felt threatened. Uh, there was a lot of union friction and there was a lot of tension over that. And that eventually exploded into violence in various cities, including Chicago uh, and, and Omaha, Nebraska, elsewhere. And secondly, uh, in the South, uh, there were lots of soldiers, African-American soldiers had gone to serve in World War I and had done a very good job there and came home uh, sometimes with medals, uh, often in their uniform because that was the only clothes they had and returning to small towns in the South and cities in the South. And many white people were threatened by black people, what they perceived as black people leaving their station, which was to be subservient. And in an, another major factor was sharecroppers who were by far the most abused class of African-Americans in the South at that time that year actually we're doing pretty well because cotton, there was a huge demand in the world for cotton. And so they were, get, they were getting good prices for cotton and they were earning more money than they had in the past. And so they were buying cars, they were buying land. And this was threatening to a lot of uh, white people in, in, in the South. So the, all, all of these factors, then there were, uh, there were other factors that were causing social mayhem. So one was influenza. Influenza had swept across the United States, killing lots of people, terrifying lots of people. There was a lot of communist uh, and anarchist activity, which was scaring a lot of business people. And so there was all kinds of tension and panic. And whenever that happens in American history, you so soon see racial tension. And so uh, beginning in the, actually in the spring of 1919, racial violence starts to erupt. Mob attacks on uh, black communities, black churches, uh, black neighborhoods in ma major cities start to erupt and start to become roll into this huge crisis. And James Walden Johnson, who I think is really an unsung hero of American history, a great American that everybody should know more about was working uh, as field secretary for the NAACP at the time. And he's the one who came up with the term Red Summer. Uh, he, he called it the Red Summer because it was so bloody. And he, fur he and other leaders in the NAACP furiously worked that year to 
increase the membership of the NAACP to travel to these places where this violence had occurred and try to document it, to lobby in Congress, to lobby uh, other governmental leaders, to try to get changes to make America, um, to make to protect Black Americans from, from these kinds of attacks and to uh, improve reduce some of the tensions around it and make and make America more equitable and live up to the Constitution. So all this was pretty fascinating, but because the violence was so ugly and because it was so horrifying, no one had really written about it comprehensively. There'd been some books about certain riots that year, but nobody had written about how this was all one sweeping action. And I felt that Americans should know about it. So I dove into this subject and it was, it was really um, fascinating. And I, it really hit a nerve with a lot of people. A lot of people wanted to hear more about this because they felt they didn't learn this in schools. I certainly didn't. Uh, and I think that if you start, you know, if you, if you start to ask people in, uh, for example, I, I started the book in a very, very small rural area in, in uh, Eastern Georgia, where a black church had been burned down. And I was speaking to a man who had, it was a deacon of the church that had been, that the previous building had been burned down. And I asked him if he knew anything about this. And he said, we weren't allowed to talk about it. And that was 90 years later. You know, people, people knew something terrible happened, but weren't able to really talk about it. So I went and did the research about what had occurred there. And, and that was really the first time it had ever been published because people were fearful, uh, even to this day, of talking about it. I think now I'm, I'm thrilled that after the book's been out for a while and People are, you know, the term Red Summer has become fairly well known now. And also people are starting to put up monuments and markers to these events and, and mark what happened. Because before that, we just had, uh, it was just sort of a forgotten part of American history. And I think that's, um, you know, you have to understand, if you're going to understand American history, you have to understand race and its role in American history. And I think for so long, that was brushed under the rug. And, and the racial tensions that and the racial violence that occurred in this country needs to be understood and incorporated into how we understand how how we are Americans today. I mean, it has to be a part of who we are and we have to, that will help us move beyond racial discord, which is really, um, certainly was the goal of James Walden Johnson and the other uh, members of the NAACP. They wanted in America where they were treated like everyone else in terms of the American constitution. And I argue in the book, and I think since I wrote it, I think persuasively that it really was 1919 and more importantly, the NAACP and other uh, black organizations reaction to that violence sparked the beginning of, of what became the long civil rights movement. It, it really launched the movement that eventually became the civil rights movement.